Let's talk about the Hoffman elimination, also known as exhaustive methylation. This involves adding excess methyl iodide, CH3I, to a primary amine. Here we have cyclohexyl amine, and here we have 2-pentyl amine, both primary amines because the group is NH2. Adding excess methyl iodide to that will convert it to NCH33. Now that's called a quaternary ammonium, ammonium because it is a nitrogen with a formal charge of plus one, and quaternary because it's attached to four other carbons, three from methyl groups and one from whatever the carbon chain that it was originally attached to was. Now NCH33 is a great leaving group, and so it's open for, in this case, elimination with OH-. Now, where does that OH- come from? Usually, it's because we add Ag2O to the solution. The Ag, so the silver ions, precipitate with the extra iodide that's in solution. That brings out AgI solid. It's an insoluble precipitate, and it leaves behind OH-. If you're wondering where the H comes from, it comes from the aqueous solvent that it was in in the first place. Let's do this for 2 pentyl uh, Amy. <laughs> Step one is to add excess CH3I. You need excess because you need to do, well, you need three different additions or combinations of these methyl groups onto the nitrogen. This happens by an SN2 mechanism, but you usually just have to write this arrow here and then demonstrate that what you end up with is an N with three CH3 groups on it. I should have given myself a little more room here, but that's okay. That N is connected to four things, so it is a formal charge of plus one. Those H's that were originally on the amine combine with two of the iodides, and we have three iodides to deal with because we have three methyl groups here, to make two HIs. And then the extra I minus is the counter ion to this positive formal charge here. Now, when we add Ag2O to the solution, those Ags are going to combine with the I minuses to make Agi solids. What happens to the Os? Well, currently in solution, you can think of them as O2 minuses, but in water, those react to make two OH minuses. Long story short, metal oxides in water give you OH minus or hydroxide ions right off the bat. So what we have really, uh, I will, uh, da, da, da. I'm gonna rewrite this just so it is clearer what's happening here. Here's your three methyl groups, CH3, positive formal charge on the N. The Ag, uh, sorry, the extra iodides are gone. They have precipitated out, and we end up with an extra OH minuses in solution. I'm going to write the lone pairs on that with the minus charge. Now, when you have a leaving group as good as this is at leaving, you're going to do usually an elimination reaction. Where are the hydrogens that can be eliminated along with it? Well, they are on not the carbon that the nitrogen's attached to, although there is one there. They're attached to the other carbons, the carbons on either side of that one. Now, we end up using the kinetic product here, which is why we like doing it in heat, which means the OH is going to preferentially attack the H's that are most accessible, First of all, there's three of them in this case, but second of all, they're the most accessible because they were on a terminal carbon. Where are the electrons from that original CH bond gonna go? The answer is they move, in this case, to the left, but into the CC double bond, just as the N, an electronegative atom, sucks up the two electrons that were originally in the CN bond. You can see, huh, you can, visualize the OH taking that H, those electrons flow this way, and those electrons flow to the trimethyl iodide, or uh, trimethylamine. So, I still have my pentane chain here, and it's actually become pentene because I have a double bond there. I'm gonna rewrite the N in the same place, 
and I'm gonna take a shortcut to show my three methyl groups. Those are not bonded together anymore. It has left. Huh? And this OH combined with that H to make ourselves an HOH or an H2O byproduct. So we've ended up with pentene out of what was originally a primary amine. That's the idea behind a Hoffman elimination. Now what I want to point out is that this is the least substituted alkene that could have been produced. The, double, the OH could, you know, theoretically have attacked these H's and the electrons would have flowed in to make pent-2-ene. But because we're using the kinetic product, because it's an E2 elimination here, it, we end up with the least substituted alkene. That is actually called the Hoffman product as opposed to the Zaitsev product, which means the most substituted one. Cool? Shall we do this once more together for a cycloamine? Yeah, sure. Step one, excess CH3I. You know the effect of that. I don't have to belabor it. We still have our cyclohexane. We have our N, and but now it has been methylated three times. I would call that exhaustively. We end up with, I guess I should write out my byproducts, like my two HIs and my I minus. When I add AG2O, it doesn't change what my actual product here is, CH33, but it does mean that I end up with AGI solid and some OH minuses, yes. Now, what is that OH minus going to do? It's not going to take H's from that carbon. It's going to take H's from an adjacent carbon. The two are equivalent here, so it doesn't matter which one I show. Notice that there's a line of symmetry in there. I'm going to show this OH stealing that H. Those electrons flow into a double bond between the C that that H was connected to and the next one, where the N was. And those electrons now belong to the N. So. I've got my cyclohexane. Oh wait, now it is ene. I've got my N in the same place, but it is no longer bonded. I have my trimethylamine here. Oh, sorry, I did all that and you couldn't see. And I have an H2O. Oh, wasn't that beautiful? We like adding heat to make that happen. And by the way, this whole thing was in aqueous solution. That's where, the, that's where some of these extra H's would have come from. Great, now, what I want to point out is that, do you know what the symmetry is around this double bond? For something smaller than cyclohexane, the ring can't twist to make a trans double bond here, so you don't have to worry about it. By the time you get to cyclohexane, now ene and larger, I've seen examples of this for cyclooctane, which makes cyclooctene, obviously, then you can end up with both trans and cis isomers here. I found one source that said it was like 60% trans and 40% cis. Could have used E and Z, but whatever. The reason is that the H's that are coming off of this, you don't necessarily know what their orientation was. If I was to draw a Newman projection along that double bond, I'm gonna draw that there. Here's my carbon chain. There's an H and there's an H. Now I'm gonna draw the carbon that was in back. Here's the NCH33 leaving group. There's the uh, other H that would have been on that carbon. And here's the rest of that alkane group. Like in this case, that's it's not an R, it's more of a ring, right? But whatever. It's also not drawn well. You get the point. The idea is that if you try to pick off an H here, you're going to end up with, I guess that looks like it might be the trans alkene because one hydrogen's pointed up and one's pointed down. And if you pick off the other H here, you're going to end up with the cis isomer because both of the H's are pointing down. Something along those lines. The idea is that between that double bond, you might have the ring going symmetrically backwards, or behind that double bond, you might end up with one 
coming, like one going backwards, and then one going down in the other direction. I'm pointing my H's here. That's clearly a trans double bond. And then the ring has to like cross in behind here. You can only do that for something six carbons or larger. Anyways, that's just like stereo considerations. Cool, Hoffman elimination though, the mechanism is the same every time. Add extra methyl iodide to make that NCH3-3. The addition of AG2O will precipitate out the I minuses, leave you with some hydroxides, and the hydroxides do an E2 elimination. Whether or not that gives you a cis or a trans or, or the least substituted product is uh, more of a stereochemical concern, which you're responsible for, but it's too much to cover in one video. This is a mechanism video. Best of luck.